Let's look at the Nike Quest 4 before it's been used. So just wanted to show it real quick before it's used. These are a size 10. Hey guys, this is a look at the Nike Quest shoe. Kind of want to give a review of these shoes after at least 150 miles of running. Uh, these are very good shoes for the money, especially if you get them on sale. Um, these are not the best color scheme, in my opinion, but they were on sale. And if you're going to use them for running, I didn't really care. But um, after many runs, the plastic is pretty good. You can see it still has like the, the, the tread. Um, so it is fairly durable, like there's only a bit of wear there. And then a bit of wear there, and right there. So they're very good. Um, I don't use this for like everyday stuff, but I guess you could. Um, I wouldn't use them for the gym because they do have like a big stack of foam in the bottom. They're probably not the most stable. Um, I do like these, I think they call them fly wires or something. So that when you tie the lace, it, it kind of does strap more. And I do feel that's the case. Um, I do like having my shoes pretty tight. Um, I'm normally, uh, I'm like 27 or 20, yeah, 27 centimeter foot. And then these are 10, size 10. So it's very weird with Nike. Some of the shoes, a nine fits me. But running shoes, for some reason, they have, I guess, more cushion in the front and the back and the rear and the sides. Um, and then the more cushion makes me get a 10. So just be aware of that. If you do get your exact size, um, it may be too snug. So you may need to go at least have a size bigger. But, you know, try them out. Go to the store and see, you know, what kind of size you're at for running shoes. Um, yeah, but so for running in regards to these shoes, they're not the most impact absorbing shoe. The EVA foam is pretty hard, um, but in a way that's good because if you're starting running, you may not have the best form and you don't want to over pronate your feet. Um, and it, that's what works for me. So these are not the most stability shoes as you can see in the footprint, but um, I think the foam really helps because I have uh, flat feet. They do over pronate normally. Um, and then over pronation is just where your foot collapses because it doesn't have an arc. So it should be like that, but mine collapses. And with this foam, because it, it doesn't really give out real quick, um, I maintain a better form as I run. And it really hasn't caused any issues. I did get shin splints, um, but that has nothing to do with the shoe. It's just, you know... I've never really ran that much, and I've learned to get more conditioned. My runs approximate at least 5 miles, if not up to 10 normally. So if you do more running, I couldn't really say if these will help out um, or be any good. But I, I think if you're doing more than um, you know, 10 or 15 miles at a time, you probably have more money to spend on like Pegasus or something. Because the Pegasus, I do have some Pegasus. Um, they are better, they are lighter, and they're very, um, they're a stable shoe, and I think they, they made it very um, malleable to fit a lot of different runners, because it's a good shoe. But these, on the other hand, they're pretty cheap. I've even seen them on Ross. So, if you do want to get into running, um, I think these are very good shoes to start with. Um, you know, if you want to find the color scheme you want that you like, that's perfect. Um, but otherwise, yeah, these are good shoes. There is an issue with these shoes, which is after I feel like I start sweating, they do squeak. So the sole, I, I think it's a sole, it kind of moves around or something. And it, it, like, you can hear it squeak. But that's only, like, if it's hot and you start sweating. Um, and it could be an issue just with my shoe. Maybe they didn't put enough, um, like, glue or something. 
And yeah, that's everything. If subscribe if you like the video. And then I'll have a link below.